The film was a 1928 film about the life of Joan of Arc, specifically about her trial. It was directed by a Danish director, Carl Theodor Dreyer, very famous, and the movie itself is renowned. It's often referred to as one of the top ten films ever. It was quite standard during the silent era to have some kind of musical accompaniment. It could just be a piano, it could be a small ensemble. In the large movie theatres, such as in New York, where there was one that seated 6,000 people, you'd have a full orchestra. So the chances are it would require and be expected to have some kind of musical accompaniment. In the case of this movie, Jeanne hears voices, and it's also an ecclesiastical setting. It's a courtroom drama. So for a silent movie, it's quite strange that there aren't any sounds to be heard, seeing as it's a series of questions and answers. The idea that we had was to come up with music specifically from the period of Joan of Arc's life, which is the early 15th century, and to set that music, to use that music as the accompaniment to the film. The first thing you would see would be the screen. The bigger the better. You were in a movie theatre after all. Whether it, or of course it could be a church you were in, as long as there's a nice big screen. We would be either beneath it or to one side, very hazily lit. Think of the way an orchestra is lit in an orchestra pit. You might get some ambient light from their music stand lights. But we are not the focus. We are there to serve the film first and foremost. So hopefully you're not too aware of us as people in the room you're much more aware of the music as it's being performed and as it's accompanying the film. We very carefully set the music so as to match the scenes, so as to Underscore the scenes is indeed the, the phrase that, that a lot of, is used about a lot of film music. So we have absolutely every beat of every bar marked on our screens, so it coincides exactly with what the audience is seeing. Silent film is actually strangely like medieval music, insofar we've lost so much of both of them. So many manuscripts have been destroyed, and silent film, which was made on nitrate film, which is highly flammable, a great deal has disappeared. Probably at least 70% of all silent films have disappeared. When people come out of this movie, having seen it, they're absolutely staggered by that. They are in a state of mild shock. And part of it is that they've never seen a silent movie before and can't quite believe how deeply it speaks to us some 90 years later.